Welcome everyone to Straight from the Paws and Happy New Year from Forever Paws Animal Shelter. Today we have some really exciting news. Some of you may have already heard it, but we have our new director with us today, Ariana Silva. Hi, Ariana. Hi. 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 <laughs> and of course, I've got my co-host, Beverly Andre. Hello as usual with us today. And so today we're going to introduce and talk a little bit about Ariana and what she has got herself into at the shelter. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to put it, Gail. I know. Well, you know, we've got to be tr truthful on the air. So Ariana, about six or seven weeks you've been with us now? Yeah, about that. Just about almost that. Almost happy anniversary. Almost happy anniversary. For two yeah. months. Yeah, yeah, for two months. Well, that's, that's wonderful. And let's talk a little bit about your background. Uh, first of all, family. Um, I am married. I have a husband and two children. Yes, and they're older, so we don't have to worry about daycare or anything like nope, that. No, teenage babysitting. boys. Yes, yeah, so that's, that's a good thing. That's a very good thing. Mm -hmm. And second of all, you have... Um, several fur babies. I do. I have four cats, which all came from Forever Animal Control, and um, four dogs. I didn't know you had four cats. I thought you had one. Nope. Four cats, five dogs. <laughs> <laughs> occupational hazard. Yes, it, it is True. an occupational hazard. That, that is for sure, for sure. Um, and so, let's talk about occupational hazard. You have been in the animal world for how many years? About 15. About 15 yeah. years. And how did you get involved in the animal world? Um, actually, you guys probably don't even know this, but my first step into the animal world was I did a fundraiser for you guys. When really? I, yep, when I worked for AT&T in Fairhaven, I, you guys were, I don't, you were selling chocolate bars and I would go and pick up a case of chocolate oh, yeah, bars I and that. I would bring them to AT&T and I would drop the money back off to you guys. That was on wow. Montop Street. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. that was, yep, that was a wow. long time ago. That was like 18 years ago? Yep, Good old and days. then I, um, AT&T had a layoff, so I was laid off because they did it due to seniority. Um, I was there for like seven years and that still wasn't enough to keep me in the door. Um, so I went, I was on unemployment. I went back to school here at BCC. Nice. Yeah, yeah, BCC and then alum. I was trying to figure out, you know, what I was going to do. And um, I started looking into the animal fields. And I wasn't really sure if I wanted to do vet tech stuff. I kind of wanted to do um, rescue work. Um, I looked into like Boston Animal Rescue League because they always seem to be hiring. But right. the commute, at that time, my kids were younger. So that was going to be a little bit of a problem. Um, and my friend, his his two dogs got into a fight and he called me to help him go to the vet and we were going to Chase Farm and we, pat we drove right by the Humane Society in Dartmouth. So that week I went and I filled out an application there. Uh -huh. So that was my first official um, job in the animal. When, the when animal you field. filled out an application, was it for an animal care specialist? It was, was for an animal care specialist. Oh, so you started at the bottom. No. No. So I had a phone interview and another interview and they hired me as the um, manager because I had managerial experience oh, okay. and their current manager was going to leave due to a maternity leave. Um, so I kind of stepped in, but I did do, I wanted to be able to do everything that everyone else was doing from the bottom up. So I did start with cleaning the cages and vaccinating animals and scooping up poop and cleaning kennels and things like that. Um, and I did stay there for, for the 15 years. And um, I would always, every summer, I would take one week in July, one week in August, and I would tell the staff, pretend I'm not here, and I would come in and not in you know managerial attire or anything and I would immerse myself in kennels and I would just do kennel work um, to keep me wow keep me there awesome. and you know so you always know what everybody is doing I hope so. our staff doesn't hear this yeah I hope they're not yeah. watching <laughs> <laughs> so there is a difference between the Humane Society and, and our group so mm -hmm. I know that you worked with both Fall River Animal Control mm -hmm. and New Bedford Animal Control while you were there but and they had you know the contracts now uh, we have both contracts mm -hmm. and quite a few more animals yeah um, so the it was it's very different because there it was it was more it was started off that way and then it kind of filtered into where they didn't have contracts so it was a lot of um, boarding a lot of owner surrenders a lot of um, imports from down south because they need rescue too um, so it was definitely different there would be weeks where we would have a lot of animals and then you know, two or three weeks would go by and there would be a handful. Um, so here with you guys, it's a constant, you know, there's, there's always cats, there's always dogs. You've got dogs in both kennels, you've got animal control coming in, you have people calling to give up, so it's, it's back to the whole, the whole boat. 
Yeah, and Bev, let's talk a little bit about how the shelter has changed um, since our previous director. What did you just, you were just telling me, Shell and Steve. Oh my gosh, yeah. So we've had a lot of changes. Um, when our previous director left, we made a commitment to try to keep back to dogs and cats. Um, I mean, it was great having some of the exotics, but our staff wasn't trained on exotics. Our staff was trained more on dogs and cats. So one of the things that we did was try to uh, partner out with a couple of other facilities. We partner out with Animal Instincts. Animal Instincts uh, will now work with us. So if we get a surrender, let's say for a ferret or a hamster or a gerbil or a guinea pig, we can partner with uh, Animal Instincts and send the animal over to them. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's, he's loving it, so yeah. that's, that's great. And he's been on our show quite a few times. I've got to add to that. When we were doing some work and trying to transport some stuff over back to um, Animal Instincts with Bob, and he, we said, well, we have a new director, and I don't think we exactly told him who it was, and all of a sudden he, he shows up and he sees Ariana, and he just gives her this big bear <laughs> hug, and he said, oh my God, it's you, and it was like, how fantastic is that? I mean, I gotta tell you, the young, you know, audience, this, this young lady has come to us with high recommendations. Oh, definitely. References yes. beyond what I, the scope of what I could have hoped for. Um, I was very nervous about having to hire someone, but, when I kept on getting, like her name kept on popping up, and I said, well, to Bev, well, we have got to at least meet this person yes. and see if, if this is going to be doable. I mean, we and did conduct interviews. We did, we you did know, some we did interviews, interviews, and I did a lot online, and we use Indeed and stuff, but she kept on uh, surfacing to the top, so to speak. All the time, <clears throat> yeah. And I was really excited about Quite that. a little reputation you yeah, have a little going bit. for you. You guys are going to embarrass me. <laughs> yeah, we well, don't embarrass, you know, don't embarrass easily. So, but you made a statement before Every time we hire somebody new. Oh, we go better, definitely. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I go back, Gail and I have been uh, working with Forever Paws since 1997. <clears throat> so we have seen a lot of uh, people in charge throughout the years. I've lost track of the names <laughs> of the people in charge. And I would always tell Gail, you know, we'd hate to see somebody go, but then I would always remind Gail, Gail, when we hire a new person, we have much more experience to add to the new person. Mm -hmm. So we know what to expect a little bit more and a little bit more. So every time we hide a new person, we went up. Mm -hmm. So we're going up and up and up. I think we're at the, the summit now. Mm -hmm. I don't think we can get up any higher <laughs> right now, but um, you bring a lot more to the table. So every person we hired along the way brought new stuff to the mm -hmm. table. And uh, like I said, we're at the summit. I agree. I, I totally agree, especially like We're going to retire and you're going to still be there. <laughs> well, this, is, this is my hope that, you know, Ariana takes over and, um, you know, really moves forward is the shelter, which I think in last six or seven weeks, she's had baptism by fire. Yeah. Oh, definitely. <laughs> and I'd like to explain to the audience out there, too, that when I say when Bev and Gail retire, um, we're on the board of directors, and it, when we interviewed Ariana, we explained to her we do not have an executive director. So right. most nonprofits have an executive director. Mm -hmm. The money that you would put into an executive director, we put back into the shelter. Oh, right, right. <laughs> you know, so uh, Gail and myself become the executive directors mm -hmm. without a pay. Right. And we divided the work up that an executive director would do. So Gail handles people. Mm -hmm. and Bev handles building. So, you know, we split it up that way. So like when I say when we retire, mm -hmm. somebody else is going to take care of the building and someone yeah. else is going to take care of the people. Um, or maybe you will be more financially able to hire an executive director. So we had right. like push you Pushed up, you up. Yeah. hire somebody. Yeah. So there's always hope. There's, there's always there's, there's always there's hope. There's always that when I say there. baptism by fire, let's just talk about some of the things that have happened recently for you. I mean, you came in, we had two holidays coming up, mm -hmm. you know, in between all the midst of it. We had to, re, you know, go through this the shelter and clear it all out from the exotics and so on and so forth. And then we Thank have you, Bob. Yes, <laughs> Bob was very helpful. And then and then, you know, you talk about revamping the schedule of what's going on at the shelter, which is a, which is a, a humongous tax to begin with. But then we also have three major projects. Like today, we have the solar panels coming down at the shelter. And then the same day, Bev decided that we're gonna get the floors done, because finally we can afford to have the floors <laughs> steamed and cleaned. So that's happening. And then, of course, we have a staff person that calls out sick on the day. Yeah. <laughs> but what I love about Ariana is, as I said, well, Bev and Gail will go down and we'll help you. And she goes, no, 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 I'm gonna help. It's gonna be taken care of. Mm -hmm. Not um, only what you just said, and I wanna jump in. I know I yeah, jump in I know in you lot, jump in, go ahead. But because 
this in the top of my head, we also had the drains all cleaned on your first week. Yeah. Yes. And you know what yes. that was like, you know, having all those tubes and hoses all yep. through the building. We also had a contract to come in and we put a uh, secondary source of heat yep. and air conditioning into the yep. kennel units at the same time, all within her first three weeks in the building. I know, it's, it's been crazy. So and contract and is coming. Yacht outside. Oh my God, yeah, so we're also building a trail and thanks, Ariana, we got the contractor for the trail. We did interview a few contractors, mm -hmm. and then she said, well, I know a guy. You know how everybody says, I know a guy. I know a guy. So we interviewed her guy, and amazing, we have to say this gentleman was amazing, and we walked through the trail. Luckily, it started, but then it rains. It rains every week. Yeah. So getting better back on snow. the trail. Yeah, yeah better than snow. Uh, getting back on the trail is a little problem, but we know we have the trail. Yeah. And when the dry season comes, is there a dry season in New England? I hope so. Yeah, August. August. <laughs> so when the dry season comes, uh, we will have um, a Facebook post asking for dog walkers. Yes. And they will have a beautiful trail to walk the dogs on. So that's all in a month. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I said, the only words I can use are baptism by fire. Yeah. You uh, really that was all in a month. And she hasn't, she hasn't broken down. She hasn't told us to stop, you know, to stop bad words, you know, stinks or whatever. Um, she's, you know, she's every day she comes in and it's okay. And the thing about what I'm enjoying, Bev and I left the shelter yesterday and every Monday I try to meet with the director and we try to talk. I must have went in her office six times. Yeah, not happening. And it just, every time the door, there was a knock on the door, uh, several times was you know who. Um, something's going on, we need Ariana, we need this, and I'm like, you know what, Ari, I don't know how we're gonna do this, but she's, you know, I mean, she's right there. She was on vacation. She had a vacation plan to visit her parents. You know, when was I going to say, no, you can't do that? And she went, but yet I find out that she's contacting the, sh the staff every day and saying how are things going, you're having a good day, is there anything you need to talk to me about? Where, um, and I try to tell her, I don't want her to get burnt out. I want her to, you know, to stay with us. I want her to beat her 15 year mark and go to 20 <laughs> and, uh, or 25, whatever. I'll and retire at 65. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that would be great. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, just keep it going. And I, I can't appreciate more what she's done already in the building. Um, what I, what I, thoroughly enjoy about what you're doing is that you go in there and you're right there with the, you know, the staff and you're mm -hmm. helping them out and you're showing them what to do. And um, I don't know, is there something you want to say something about the job so far? I, I'm very, very happy where I am. I find that the support from you guys and the rest of the board is amazing. I like that you have an active board and they come in and they actually work in the shelter and they help. Um, there hasn't really been anything negative, I can really say. Yes, everything's going on. Yes, we're making changes. Yes, building upgrades. But that's always going to be a constant. So for me, it's just kind of we have to work around whatever's happening because the staff's still going to be there and have to medicate and clean and do whatever, and the animals still need to be taken care of. Um, I like that it's, it's going. Something is always happening every single day. Um, I like the positivity. The staff is great. Um, I don't have anything. I'm happy. I'm very happy right Yay. now. Yay. You know, very happy. We're and happy, one too. One of the things we like is that some people order food a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We told her she's going to gain a yeah, few pounds. Yeah, the waistbands are getting yeah. bigger and bigger. Yeah, that's my only complaint is like <laughs> homemade cinnamon buns yeah. Yeah. and brownies yeah. and cookies. And mm. it's just some. We do have a lot of people that like to cook and bring yes. food in. And then we have the people that like to order lunch when they're there. Well, sometimes we order salads. We order <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes salads. Are, yeah, that's true. Uh, I would like to share one thing that uh, we've been working on very hard. It's called the medical room. Mm -hmm. um, you have some things you'd like to share to the audience. What is the medical room all about? I don't think the people realize that in an animal shelter like ours, a big portion of our day is medical. Mm -hmm. uh, that could be something that I think the audience could learn about. Yeah, I mean, the, the medical aspect of it is, is almost a whole other job in itself. Right. So you have to keep track of, you know, the dogs and the cats, when they came in, um, what vaccines they, they need, what tests they need to have. Um, all of this needs to be done before they can even be moved over into the adoptable side because you have to make sure you have a healthy animal going up for adoption. Um, we're very lucky in the sense that we work with um, two vets, one that comes in every single week and one who's also on our board who comes in once a month. Um, 
you know, so if our animals are lucky enough that they don't have to leave to be seen every week. Obviously, if it's an emergency, then we do have multiple vets that we use, and the vets in the area have been fantastic in taking in, you know, emergencies or sick visits, things like that. Um, but the staff is required to medicate and document, um, you know, monthly vaccines, um, heartworm, check everybody for fleas and tick, make sure everybody's up to any, to the preventative. Um, make sure everybody has negative fecal so we're not passing parasites back and forth that you know and that in itself is just three three areas of the building with the dogs now we're not even getting into the cat rooms and the rooms that people meet in so it, it is a full medical and disinfecting after is just 95 percent of the job it is that the staff do that's what i wanted the audience to mm -hmm. hear it's not just that we get dogs in and then dogs get adopted no. <clears throat> it's there's a process that goes on inside of the building on a mm -hmm. daily basis and we call it the medical room um we also do grooming in there yep in the same same room we have uh, volunteers that come in and wash the dogs, wash the dogs yeah. and brush them and blow the, blow dry them and take care of those needs, so that's a thing. And then there's also volunteers. Um, sometimes we're inundated with volunteers. Yeah, we're not right now, though. We're not? No, we're, we're not good. right now. We just had a, an orientation last Sunday, and uh, we only had four people show up. A lot of phone calls. People call up and have a lot of inquiries, like uh, Joyce, our volunteer coordinator, said she had like 20, 25 calls, and then only four people showed up. And so that becomes an issue, you know. So if there's some people out there that are seniors, Mm -hmm. you know that may want to come in and just sort of like socialize the you know the cats, the cats. and just you know groom them we have, i'm sure everybody's seen on social media the, the gentleman the grandfather that goes and he oh, sits all asleep and falls the cat, asleep safe and haven a, cat sanctuary I think he's a brother of some sort of religious group and he goes in and he's retired and he just sits there and he and he grooms them and he falls asleep they did a whole calendar we need to put on the a guy. couch in our cat yeah. room yeah <laughs> that's that you know we, we've tried we've tried stuff like that it doesn't work but anyway so you know, people that are retired that, you know, you want something to do. Maybe you can have an animal in your own biz, you know, in your own building, but you'd like to come in. They say, oh, I'm going to fall in love with them. Of course you do. Mm -hmm. But then when you see them go home to a good home, it makes you feel good. I mean, you know, I think that that's important. And then in the spring, Ariana, we're going to be looking for volunteers, dog walkers. Yes. <clears throat> They're going to be trained properly. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to have to, um, you know, we'll have people that will come in on a regular basis, and that's what they're going to do. They're going to do dog walking. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about volunteering at the shelter. Um, is there, well, there's a certain age requirement. We know 18. that. 18. 18. Mm -hmm. But to come in and socialize an animal, like an hour, an hour and a half, mm -hmm. and they could just sit there and kind of just groom the pets yep. and so on, especially in the rooms that are, are um, open to all the animals mm -hmm. and the other cats. That, that's a good idea. I think, it's a, I think it's a great idea. We could use more of them, I think. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And if you, know, if you have um, <clears throat> you know, an, ol an older teenager or preteen and you want to do it as you know, a mother-daughter or father-son type of project, that's something we can always talk about as well. You know, so if you that's have a good idea. You know, kids who are right at that age where they're trying to figure out what they want to be, or they, they want to have a focus in the animal field, it's a good way to start them off. Um, but, you know, we would want a guardian with them, um, at least in the beginning, to make sure everything is, is kosher. And let's go back to baptism by fire. <laughs> we, <clears throat> we also have, through BCC's program, which Bev and I are on the advisory board, um, you have an intern this semester. Has she started I yet? I have two, actually. You no, have two? I have two from BCC. They're going to be starting, I believe, January 22nd. Wow, so mm -hmm. you took on another? I took on two, yep. Wow. Mm -hmm. Are they both going to do the same thing or are they in separate areas, like office and medical or No, nope, they're both going to do animal, some sort of animal care. They're both so they'll both kind of get um, to do a little bit of everything with the animals. So they'll be paired with, um, each will be paired with someone different. That'll be their go-to person. Um, and we'll have them for the, the remainder of the school year. And you're going to be the supervisor? Mm -hmm. Yep, I've already got their packets and everything, so wow. that's, that's all settled. That's well, amazing. Yeah. That's that, another good thing. That, and that's, that takes a lot of work and yeah. a lot of supervision and so on. And then lastly, we also have a student from Case High School that came over Christmas vacation. She did the videotape, and she's going to oh, do yeah. a video. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> she wants to do it as a um, final project for her videography class. Oh, she called? was interviewing people right. through the shelter. She was do did she interview know, you? Nope, she's going to come back, um, take some additional photos, do another interview, and her goal for that is to hopefully um, show, showcase some of the animals that have been there for a little, a little bit looking for a home, because there are a couple that have been there for a while.
Yes, and let's talk a little bit about that. We yes. had some dogs that have been there for a while, and we're going to let Bev talk about her favorite dog. Well, I have a lot of favorite dogs, but uh, <laughs> let's talk about one. One of the things that you did was you came in and said, wow, this dog has been in the shelter for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Let's see what we could do to help this dog. So you contacted other rescues mm -hmm. and other groups, mm -hmm. and they came down and kind of interviewed the dog. Yes, yeah. Um, and then they, they were able to take the dogs and uh, move them to other places. So mm -hmm. one of those was Nani. Yes. So Nani was on our Facebook page for a long time. She was in a yellow background. She had a pink boa, boa. scarf <laughs> on her. Um, and she was a great dog. It's just they're hard to adopt uh, because they have so many restrictions, like mm -hmm. no kids, no, um, you know, no no small pets or no other dogs in the household or sometimes no men, no women. Yeah. Uh, so there was a lot of restrictions on a dog like Donnie. Mm -hmm. But we, as a shelter, always tried to give dogs um, a time. We, we wouldn't say today is his end, end day. Right. You know, it's like this is a great dog. We just got to find the right person. Mm -hmm. So Nani went to another place. And what happened with Nani? She went to our friends over at Fairhaven Animal, Animal Control. They have a shelter there. And she was adopted um, last, I think, last week or the beginning of this week. Yep. So oh. another successful story. And then, of course, my favorite successful story is a little dog named Rudy. Mm -hmm. So Rudy came into the shelter in August of 2018 and was at the shelter for less than two weeks, went into foster. Mm -hmm. And then we saw the crazy behavior that Rudy had. Mm -hmm. uh, Rudy was a nipper. She'd go after ankles. She'd go after shoes. Um, so I fostered Rudy. Mm -hmm. um, and another girl, Betty, fostered Rudy. So we played back and forth. But then Ariana came onto the scene, that was you, yeah. <laughs> and she goes, well, we got to move this dog, too. <laughs> In the meantime, uh, Rudy kept going to daycare. So we um, partnered with New England Daycare in Westport. Bill uh, was a great help with Rudy. Mm -hmm. So he took on Rudy as a cause, and he said, if you have anybody interested, have him come to me. Mm -hmm. So we did. But then Ariana came on board, and she said, we got to move Rudy, and wrote this wonderful letter and introducing Rudy again to Facebook, followed up immediately by a Dear Santa letter. Yeah. <laughs> and that Dear Santa letter wow, really uh, pulled at <clears throat> hot strings. And lo and behold, a lot of people did go to New England um, daycare, uh, New England dog training, yep. and met Rudy. And Bill, instrumental in oh, saying yeah. this is the correct person. Mm -hmm. And so Rudy found her forever home. And we have been in touch with, uh, yeah. I, her name is Tracy. We've been in touch with Tracy. And she is loving Rudy. And Rudy is loving her. Yeah, the pictures she sent in were, were really right. cute. Right, and yeah. it's like it was the perfect home. Yeah. We kept saying there's a home out there for everybody. But that didn't happen for over a year and five months mm -hmm. until you came on board and said, we need to move Rudy. And you, you put Rudy out there, and I guess this is when social media is fantastic. Yes. Because it was shared and shared and shared, and, and people saw and, and said, oh my god, if I could have another dog, it would be Rudy. And that's how Rudy got adopted. And I have to say, that was like one of the blessings. So Nani, Rudy, these were some success stories. And we're yeah. hoping Luscious, because Luscious is another one of our long-term residences. Yes, she, so Luscious uh, made a year in the shelter on Christmas Day. Um, mm -hmm. And she she's tough because you know she's she's real she's really more like an am staff but she's gonna fall into the pit bull category, so a lot of people have a tough time with those dogs they have a bad reputation, um, so in order to get the dog where it needs to be for the forever home we try to ensure that we're setting it up to succeed and not fail so we do have certain restrictions with pit bull adoptions um, or any of the bully breed adoptions that may seem a little over the top but it is again for the benefit of the dog so she would need to go to a home with older kids um, preferably um, no dogs but we would consider a male dog if it was a good match um, and no cats and we do require that the person owns their home we do not do um, pits to renters just because you can't tell the future you don't know if you know they're going to move the house is going to get sold things happen and we need to ensure that the dog is going where it's going is its last stop um, so she has been visited by multiple people um, and either they change their mind or they're afraid of the homeowner's insurance or they have another animal and they don't get along um, so Bill is actually going to take her, take her twice a week and we're going to work on some of her behavior so she can acclimate to living with another dog 
um, because then that'll make her, that'll open up a whole other range of homes that would be able to, um, you know, to, to take her on. And Bill is New England dog training. New England dog training, yes. Right, and he came to the shelter, he met with her, and mm -hmm. um, he said she's a great dog. It's just we've yeah. got to work through her issues. Well, and that's the thing, too, because the dogs can show one way in the shelter, and then when they get into a home environment, it can be different. We also have another long-term resident named Hooch. Um, he's like a seven-year-old chubby pity with a big face and a sloppy, gives sloppy kisses. He's, he's a doll. Um, and we did contact Pity Stop Rescue. They came in, we evaluated him, they evaluated him. Their foster home came in with their dog. Everything was fine, they, they did well together. And when they got Hooch home, the dynamic changed in the house um, and he just decided that he was not gonna tolerate any other dogs in the house. So he had to come back into the shelter. So, you know, when something like that happens, you're really closing out a whole um, avenue of homes. Um, so Pity Stop is looking for a foster home where he would be the only dog, except the problem is people who do foster tend to have multiple More animals. Correct. So it gets yeah. a little bit tricky. So we do have some great dogs looking for, you know, looking for homes, but it just has to be the right fit. And they're out there. Yeah, Nani, yeah. Nani, well, obviously Nani Rudy it. proved it and Nani yeah. proved Nani it. Nani proved it and also Tracy was sent over to um, Fairhaven with Nani and she, and she was adopted and she is now the best friend of um, an, a special needs um, child See in the that? house awesome. and it's a fantastic, a fantastic match. So I just wanted to let our studio audience realize, not a studio audience, see I said that again. <laughs> the, uh, the audience out there know that we, we like to work with other rescues and other mm -hmm. shelters because, you know, people just walk by the dogs in the kennels. Now they've seen them there for a year, they just walk by them. So you bring them to another place and they get another opportunity to see different people. Yeah, the, the, the geographics really matter. Right, you know, Because really you have does. the same people that come in your area and they're looking for something specific that they haven't found yet. Um, so again, Nani was in the shelter system for over a year and she was at Fairhaven for maybe a month. Right. right. She had a lot awesome. of um, a lot of interest. And again, same thing, you have to find the right the right match. It took about a month over there versus a year here. So we like to work well with the other the other shelters because it helps the animals. Well, ladies, I have to tell you this, we're getting close to the close of our show. Yes, can but you believe it? I just want everybody to know that, you know, you want to come down and visit our new director. She's there. She's there a lot. And like I said, very, very busy. Mm -hmm. She's changed the dynamics of a lot of what's happened at Forever Paws. And we didn't get to talk about it, but maybe next time we'll talk about it. We've changed a little bit of our, also our social media. Mm -hmm. um, she's putting a lot of dogs that are adopted out there again, and she's also putting dogs that are being found. And we had stopped doing that with our previous director for various reasons, but she convinced us that we should try again to do this, and so we have, and, and, it's, and it's been worth, it's been working, so we're very pleased with that. We wanna thank you for that, because you know it wasn't like we didn't wanna do that. We had various reasons why we were told we, sh we couldn't do that, it wasn't mm -hmm. a good idea. But she came up with a great idea, so we appreciate all that you've done so far in the short amount of time. And um, again, and the young lady is Ariana Silver, our new director.